Alright, so um, the, the, the aim is to get the, the joint lock flowing. So we've done this idea from the simple pin, which is we talked about, you can find that in um, Techie, and you can find variations of it that we just looked at in the Seishi and the other such catalysts, yeah? So um, that's where we're going to go. And we need this, this, these two bends as we talked about. If those bends aren't going to work for you, or the arm starts to straighten, then you don't fight it, you don't push it. You just put your arm on this arm here, step around with your back foot, and use the hickory to pull this one to here. Which is your Gidambri at 45 degrees, which you find in, um, uh, what's well, it, 90 degrees in Hiyan Shodan, 45 degrees in Pinan Nida. And in Karate Do Kyohan, Gichi Funakoshi, there's a picture of him doing this. Um, me being Funakoshi, you being Utsuke. <laughs> and uh, it, um, in, the, in, in the original edition, in the, in the, the text, he said, you know, uh, this is the application of the Gidambarai in Teki. So, so this idea of, you know, you see the position, can't you? So the idea of using a Gidambarai as a straight arm lock is well established. So that's all I want you to do for now is, rather than putting the lock on completely, uh, you're going to get so far that I want you to flow into the next one. Making sure you step off this line. See, I'm an angle. Because that does two things. One is it takes Nick's arm away from his centre line which makes him weaker. It also takes me off his attack line, whereas Nick is still on mine. Does that make sense to everyone? We've got a few more techniques to add yet, but that's where we'll go first. So, one, two. Okay? Just to kind of learn how to flow from lock lock. Try and avoid this. Try and not go... You know, I mean, to make an extreme example of how to do it wrong. Try and get it so that it flopped. Is everyone okay with the idea with, with no gap between the two? Okay, give it a go, see what you can do. One of the problems with flow drills is by definition you're doing it wrong. Right, so what, what we need uh, in reality is, uh, if a technique's not working, then of course we need to be able to quickly flow onto the next. But in reality you don't want flow. Because flow, for flow to exist you need time. And in a real fight we don't want time. So that is, if we're fighting away, Nick gets an arm, we'll be pulling it down, maybe give me a shot. So I manage to move off, I'll get that lock on, boom! I want it to land in a big heap. Uh, I don't want to be kind of, no, 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 get back up, I, I want to carry on flowing. <laughs> no, but if I've knocked him out, I've knocked him out, right? So when I'm doing the flow drill, I don't put the lock on fully, I kind of let it go halfway. And then I move on to the next one. And I don't, if I do this, that's the end of my flow drill. Yeah, but that's exactly what I do want to do in a real fight. Right? But for the sake of the flow drill, we're assuming that the technique hasn't worked, so you move on to the next one. Is everyone all right with that? So, but you've got to remember that flow in a real fight means that you're not winning yet. Right? So it's not a good thing. Right? So, if you look, we've got techniques in pairs. So that one takes the arm while it's bent. And if you time to straighten it, then we go to a straight one. Take it in that way. The thing, the way he may resist is he tries to bend his arm and comes this way. If he does, I'll roll this arm over because he wants to bend it anyway, so let him. Bring this arm through. Bring your hand eye on your chest, grab your own forearm. See, I've let my thumb just slide out from there to there. At this point here, I can push onto the wrist, and I've got a wrist lock, but I'll leave that alone for nice and safe. What I then do is as I rotate, that attacks the shoulder joint. You can only move so far until he's going to move with it, right? And again, in actuality, what I want to do there is take him straight down with it, and then I can move and do whatever else. But for the sake of the drill, I'm going to keep him on his feet. For now, put him down. <laughs> Right, and then when we come off the next flow drill, we'll keep him going again. So we've got wrist lock, elbow lock, shoulder lock. Okay? And there's a free arm lock on the end there, which isn't part of the drill, I just put it on. Okay. One, two, three. So everyone alright with that idea? And then we're going to work back out again. Okay, so give that one a go. And the whole idea is you get flow, so it's not separate techniques. You get flow, so you just move from one to the other with no kind of um, gap. Is everyone okay to try that? Okay, off we go. Some key points on that last one. So, uh, one, two, three. Try and get your um, chest pretty close to his elbow, on, on the elbow. If, if there's a gap there and he pulls his elbow downwards, I'll end up getting my own lock put on. Yeah? So, I mean, people will do that as well. If he starts to panic, he whips it down and ends up busting my wrist in the process. <laughs> So if you've got it your, your, your high here, that'll stop him from doing that. Or, you know, you've got to be quick with putting the lock on itself. And then when you're there, it's that there that causes it to be off balance. And as I mentioned at the start of the a variation of a possible application will start with showdown. Um, and when, certainly when he's down there, if you have a look at the, the position you end up in here, how many times in Canada do you see that? 
you know, so it, it is a, a common move. Now, in reality, again, you know, if we're kind of doing this, we know what's going wrong. But for the sake of the technique, I don't, because I want to practice the flow. So I, I went to there, and then what happens is I feel him resisting and pushing back this way. Naturally, he'll start with his arm extend, so we go, okay, I'll go back a bit. So I'll go back to the straight arm bar again. This would be the point where, boom, you'd impact. Right, because remember, we use the locks to, like, you know, so this one gives us that. Right? And when we looked at the station a second ago, that, you know, that kind of straight arm bar gives us this. You know, when we've done that, gives us that. You know, we're using the locks to set up strikes, but at the moment we're flowing from lock to lock to get that flow. So one, two, three, four. Is everyone alright with that one? And then we've got five, and that's probably enough for now, for this little basic one anyway. So one, two, three, four. That's not five, but it's a good five. <laughs> now, have a little play with that one, then we'll add something on the end, okay? The technique on its own first, right? So I'm just going to take through it. You've got to put your uh, index fingers on the, the bracelet of the wrist, where your watch would be. You put your thumbs into the back of the hand, high on it, not low, high. Right? So what we're doing is we're bringing the hand to that position there, and we're bending it back on itself. As well as bending it back that way, then we twist it. You see, that starts his body to move. As I read the thing, I don't just twist using my hands from there, I'll turn my body. Keeping that arm quite close. So from there, I just turn, and that will take it down. Is everyone right with that? So it's a real kind of, you know, box standard wrist, uh, wrist lock. Really. Off this style, I mean, my own body will do it off a push. So as it comes in, they'll parry this way, take it, and then we'll put it around here. Before they'll lock up and do whatever else they want to do next, you know? Is everyone right with that idea? So that, that's the technique itself on its own. Um, for application, for our know, little drill, we've got the wrist pin pulled, centre lock, straight arm bar, entangled lock. Back of the straight one, then, uh, if I move around the side so you can see, then from there, I want, because now again, if he wants to resist, he's wanting to come this way again. So I could go back to the lock we've already done, but we've already done that one. So I'll slide the hand down to here as he comes up, I'll adjust the grip to get my wrist lock, fold it and bend it as I step in, and turn, keep my arms closed so he goes down. Put your foot under his back and you can buy your arm across your knee if you want. Right? Or in fact and then move away. So this is the, the drill. If we do it on that side, it might seem a little bit better. One, two, three, four, five. You never know about that idea. So you're just going to flow through those five, right? Again, in reality, you don't want that. It's just a way to practice. If, you if this one doesn't work, move on to this one. Right? So if a bent one's not working, do a straight one. If a straight one's not working, do a bent one. If a bent one's not working, do a straight one. Come back and take the wrist and take it down. Is everyone okay with that so far? Right? Just have a go at that and then we'll vary it. Okay? I'll sh we'll make it a, um, a base from which we can work through the things. Okay? So try that one, all right? Just flowing back and forth. Yeah, it's, it's just, you can see, looking around the room, you can, you can see that a lot of you are getting it right because you're all walking towards me like this. <laughs> just kind of shaking the wrists out, yeah? Um, so as we mentioned, so this is the problem with flow drills is flow is something we want in practice but not in actuality. Right, you don't want to flow, you want to drop the guy quick. So in a real fight, you should never be sitting there thinking, wow, this is great, it's flowing really well. You know, what you want to have happen is like, bang, he hits the ground and that's it. You know, but the, the, these are nice ways to practice, well, what if this one doesn't work, what can I move on to? And if you notice, we've, we've gone you know, along the, the locks, we've gone wrist lock, sh uh, elbow lock, shoulder lock, elbow lock, wrist lock. So we've moved up and down the arm, so it's a chance to introduce various locks to you. Because in a moment we're going to work um, counters and escapes them as well. So what I want you to do now is, you'll do the drill straight fully through, and then you will stop after each lock and hit them. So I'll show you what I mean, right? So you start from here, you'll go one, two, three, four, five. Right, that's the first bit. And then your partner will get it. Then what you'll do is, after each one, you'll stop and hit. So on the first one, I'll put it on, I'll take it down, impact, and I'll move away. Right, we'll come back in. This time, I'll go one, two, move away. The next one, one, two, three, impact, move away. You get the idea? So I've done all of them. Uh, when I and then to finish off with, I'll do it one more time. I'll do all five on the end. On the end. 
back. Do you ever remember that idea? Because it just reminds you that, you know, it's the impact we want. You know, so as, as we're fighting, that's what we're looking for. And if during the course that we get a lock to find out where his head is, we take it. Or during the course we're going, oh, there he's back, you know, take it through the things and I'll take it. I'm sorry. I've done it again. <laughs> YouTubers. <laughs> I've hit him again, look. Oh, sorry. Uh, but, but, uh, but that's the point. We're using the lock to break balance and set things up. We're not using them as ends in themselves. But we can isolate them for practice, and that's kind of what we're doing now. Is everyone okay to give that one a go? So try and do all, all the locks straight through, break off after each one, and then all the locks straight through again. Then it's your partner's turn. Nick's not getting a go because he'll want vengeance. <laughs> all right, how little handle could go on that one, please? All right? Sorry, sir. That was, that was oh, no, no, no.